Well, I bet you never saw a tech review intro like that one, huh? Well, we're on our way to the Rickerton Market today, and we're going to go see an airplane in the afternoon. So let's go and do the review of this camera, the Remove UK one. It's a good little camera, but not without its drawbacks. There you go, that's a little hyperlapse. So the first real, you know, attraction to this camera is the fact that it's a gimbal and a camera built in. And it's really, it's a small enough form factor that you can fit it in your pocket. Yeah, anyway, camera and gimbal built in. That's one of the big attractions of this camera. Okay, let's talk for a moment about the wide-angle lens. It's a bit like a GoPro lens. It's, I mean, it's not the same as a GoPro lens, the lens is similar. One of the things that is really striking about it is that when your face is in the center of the screen, it looks reasonably, you know, correctly proportioned. When you stick your face out on the side of the screen like that, suddenly you become even fatter than you really are. You know, uh, and that's, that's the pincushion effect of a wide angle lens. And this is, I'm, I'm rec recording this review after they have upgraded the firmware because the the, uh, the first firmware version with this camera, this was a real massive problem. But they addressed that and they fixed it, but it's, I mean, it's only partially fixed, it's still an issue. It's the fat face effect. Okay, let's address the audio. Let's, let's skip I mean, it does have an onboard microphone. It's about what you'd expect. Nothing special. I mean, you're going to get that wind noise effect thing going on. <coughs> I've been using one of these from Amazon.com. This is a little, uh, um, little bendy microphone. It um, does a pretty good job. Uh, one thing that the uh, the menu settings on this camera do have is it has a decibel adjust. And what I found that I had to do was I had to adjust the decibels down because you know early on when I was making videos with this camera you're like the, the audio was was peaking too much so I had to put the decibels down so let's plug this thing in see what it sounds like there we go so I've just had a little wee notification pop up on the little screen telling me external mic is connected one thing also if you do put this little wee bendy mic on there you want to kind of stick it down a little bit I'll show you why if I stick it back up, and I tilt the camera back, look at that, now we can see the microphone. If you do put on a little bendy microphone like this, tilt it downwards. Straight, down. Straight, down. Yeah, tilt it downwards. The way this thing turns on, it's got these, the switch, little switch down the side here. Turn that on to activate it. it. Gives you the old beep, beep, beep. It's got a little selfie screen here. So it's got, um, you know, like three modes. So it defaults to pan mode, and in pan mode, the lens you know, stays level with, with the gimbal. Two taps, re centers it. One tap on the trigger uh, puts it on the follow mode. So follow mode now, now means that that uh, lens is going to point down. And three taps, turns it into selfie mode. Now you'll notice too that with, when it's on selfie mode, my hand is on the left side of the, uh, of, of the camera here, but it appears on the right side of the screen. And that's a little bit awkward, you know, it's just kind of a bit distracting. And one thing I do want to tell you about too is this little joystick here. This little joystick, you know, it, it'll control, you know, manual control of the uh, the gimbal. It'll also, this is the same joystick that you use to navigate the menus. It, it works, it works fine, um, but it's a little bit, sometimes it's a little bit unresponsive. 
you know, sometimes it doesn't quite respond the way it's supposed to, and sometimes it, it, it like overly responds. Uh, like you may think that you've got it level, and then it keeps on creeping up or keeps on creeping down. Now before we dive right into the lens comparisons, I just want to show you something. I just want to make something kind of clear to you. Now, I'm just this part of this you know, I think that, to be honest with you, this joystick is one of the weakest points of this uh, camera. So I got this thing for traveling, and one of the reasons that I got it for traveling is its small form factor. Have a look at this. It fits all the way in my pocket. So we've got a bird down there. You can also zoom in on this camera by holding down the trigger and pushing up on the uh, little joystick. That's going to give you a digital zoom. Just like that. Well, we made it to the Antarctic Center. Supposed to be a big plane here. Let's have a look at the time-lapse functionality on the Remove UK1. There's actually two time-lapse modes. One of them is basically your standard time-lapse mode. Another one is like a panning time-lapse mode. I'll show you. Well, here it is. People are calling this thing Big Bird. impressive plane huh so that's one second time lapse there's another one of these planes over here so let's do the time lapse mode where you can select your start and end point on the gimbal and you get one of these really cool turning time lapses now usually when people do these they have to like buy an egg timer and sit the camera on it well because this is a camera and a gimbal all built in one we can do that without motion time lapse mode and it's slowly turning from left to right So you may be asking yourself, why are these planes here? Well, I live in Christchurch in um, New Zealand and it's known as the gateway to Antarctica. So New Zealand has a station down on um, Antarctica called Scott Base and the US Air Force has one called uh, McMurdo Station. So these American Air Force planes are obviously loading up and taking supplies to McMurdo Station for the Antarctic summer. Okay, let's have a look at the menu mode. We've got a menu button here that brings up our menu. We control our menu with our joystick here. So we've got video settings, photo settings, manual settings, gimbal settings, camera settings, and playback. Playback does exactly what you think it is. It's just going to show you your videos you've got on there. Press the menu button to go back, press the record button to go forwards. So let's have a look at video settings. We've got mode video, slow motion, time lapse video. Right now I have it to 4K 30 frames per second, that's adjustable to different modes. A 
field of view, wide, narrow, medium, motion setting. So motion setting is for when you're recording something and you want that gimbal to turn from left to right or right to left. So what you'll do is you'll set the uh, number of minutes that you want it to do. Press the record button and it's going to say that says there trigger, add and menu back. The uh, camera that's recording this is sort of overexposing it a little bit. So if I spin to the left, trigger, add, spin to the right, trigger, add, and then start. So yeah, it starts recording automatically. Now I've set it to take, uh, I think it's one minute and 15 seconds to do that spin. So this is how you do it with uh, you know, your time lapse uh, as well as just regular video when you want that camera to turn from one place to the other. Okay, so low light performance. Well, how are we doing with our low light here? We've got some indoor incandescent lighting. To be perfectly honest, it's not really that bright in here. Let's go outside, see what it looks like outside. As you can see, as I move further away from the light source out there in the dark, you know, you, do, you get that definite graininess creeping in there. But, you know, this camera is never going to win any awards for its, you know, low light performance. I mean, it is essentially an action camera built into a gimbal. Eh, it is what it is. So, let's have a look at the form factor of this camera. Now, this camera does not come with this little tripod. I've just been using this little mini tripod uh, for this review. Nor does it come with that microphone. This is what you get. When you're not using this camera, you have to lock the gimbal in place. You can see how it's flopping around there. It has a locking mechanism on the back and the top part here clicks into place just like that. Now when you turn it on, if you turn it on whilst it's in this mode, you'll have a warning screen come up there which says safety mode. To prevent damage from the gimbal, safe mode has been activated. So in other words, it's not actually supposed to operate when you've got this thing locked into place. Overall, it's a fairly simple affair to operate, and that's good, that's the way you want it. You know, you've got your functionality trigger around the bag. This is probably the, the apart from the record button, which is for start and stopping recording, this trigger button is the thing that you're going to be using really the most. You've got your video record button here, your camera uh, picture button here, your joystick here, which, you know, when you're recording, it's going to control your gimbal. When you're in your menu, it's going to control your menu. The power switch is on this side. It's one of these, you know, hold it up, hold it down type setups. On the other side, you've got your SD card slot and your microphone slot, which sticks out the side, which is a point of contention for some people. You know, why would you have a little microphone slot kind of sticking out the side? When you think about it, it kind of does make sense, though. You know, if you had it, the microphone just pointing one way or just pointing the other, then any time you turn this thing around, your microphone's potentially pointing the wrong way. So, you know, although some people have been really critical of the microphone pointing out the side, I think I can see the reason for it. Uh, lastly, let's talk about the battery. Now, you can charge the battery whilst it's in the, um, in the in, inside the camera here. Uh, there's a little USB camera charging slot there. You don't even need to take it out of the camera. It removes from the camera by pulling on these little two things on the side here that say push. And like some other gimbals that you may have seen, such as the uh, the Landpart HHG01 gimbal, the battery just comes out just like that. And it does have a little screw on the bottom. I think it's the 1 8, 1 8 inch thread screw for uh, tripods. Now, it actually also has a button down the bottom, which allows you to tell how much battery power is left. So we've got three bars there. Now when you insert it into the camera, you can still see those, bar, those bars, that battery power, because we have like a, a clear screen here. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can actually put this in your pocket and voila, camera in your pocket.
Okay, let's summarize the Removeview K1 gimbal and camera. Now this has been designed really as an all-in-one system for vlogging. I wouldn't say it's an all-in-one system, but it is pretty damn good for what it is. One of the problems that the uh, this camera's competitors, i.e. the DJI Osmo, have had is that the Osmo has quite a long focal length, so you know, you've got to hold it quite a long way away from you to, uh, to get it to focus. This camera doesn't have this problem. This camera will focus, you know, probably, I think it's half a meter away from your face. Of course, with such a short focal length too, uh, it's going to look basically kind of like a GoPro. You get a little bit of that pin cushion effect. But you know, with all of the drawbacks this camera has, and I would say the joystick as well, the joystick is definitely um, a weak point to this camera. With these drawbacks, I think the, the pros definitely do outweigh the cons, and it is a really good little camera for basically walking around, walking, talking, vlogging, you know, telling a story, just traveling with you. It's really an ideal traveling vlogging camera. Am I glad that I bought it? Yeah, I think so. Will I use it in the future? Yes, definitely. I will be taking this uh, to China with me next time I go to China, whenever that may be. Um, but it's not really an all-in-one solution. You know, the inability for you to change out the lens means that you're never going to be able to achieve certain types of video look that you can with other cameras. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you found the video useful. If you're on Twitter, you can tweet me at Y2JDazAsia. And I think if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, I think you should leave a comment. Thanks for watching.